5.1 Intercepts of Rational Functions I'm Anil Kumar and we will see how to find x and y intercepts of a rational function. We are given two rational functions here. Let us do one by one. y equals to minus 3 over x plus 2. To find the x intercept, what should we do? To find x intercept, we need to substitute y equals to 0 then we get x intercept, right? So if I substitute y equals to 0, I get 0 equals to minus 3 over x plus 2. If I cross multiply, I get 0 equals to minus 3. Well, that is not possible, right? So that is not true. Since that is not true, we do not have any x intercept here, right? So, so that means x intercept is not there, right? So no x-intercept, right? So it is none. Now let's try to find what is y-intercept. Now for y-intercept, we have to replace x with 0, right? So I wrote 0. We'll put 0 for x, okay? So if I put 0 for x, I get y equals to minus 3 over 0 plus 2, and that gives us minus 3 over 2 as the y-intercept, correct? Okay? So for this particular rational function, there is no x-intercept, but there is a y-intercept at minus 3 over 2, right? So that is how we can find x and y-intercept. So in a reciprocal function, y-intercept is this value. If I put x as 0, we can see this value is the y-intercept, right? And you will notice that a reciprocal function like this will never have any x-intercept. It has a horizontal asymptote. The function really approaches 0. It is never 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals to 0 for such a function, right? Now let's take up the next example. Now in this case we have a polynomial function whose numerator and denominator degrees are same. In such a case we have a different horizontal asymptote, which is 1, right? So, so in this case, we expect to have x and y intercepts. Let us calculate, right? So let's begin with x intercept, the same exercise. For x intercept, replace y with 0. So if I write y with 0, that means the numerator should be 0, correct? Now, before getting into this, it is a good practice to write down restrictions of this function. I hope you'll appreciate why I said so. So we'll write both in factored form, x squared minus 4. I could write this as x plus 2 times x minus 2, right? That is the factored form. And denominator, we can factor, we need product of minus 6 and sum of plus 1. So 3 times 2, right? So x plus 3 times x minus 2. So that is how we can write it. And that tells us one thing very clear, that is restrictions, right? Restriction is that x should not be equal to minus 3 or plus 2, correct? So these are the restrictions on our function, right? However, x minus 2, x minus 2 do cancel out, so we have a hole at this point, correct? But anyway, to begin with, let us be clear that the function is not defined at x equals to minus 3 and now let us work with our x-intercept, right? So x-intercept means y equals to 0. That means the numerator should be 0, right? So what we can do is, as a quick step, we should equate numerator to 0, right? So equate numerator to 0. So that is what you can do. Here also, minus 3 equals to 0, which is not true. Simple as that. So here we'll write, x square minus 4 equals to 0 because y is 0, right? So x square minus 4 should be equal to 0. So that gives us that x square equals to 4 or x equals to plus minus square root of 4 which is plus minus 2. So according to the calculation, we get x equals to plus minus 2. But remember the restrictions. x cannot be 2, right? So we could have only one possible value, right? So possible solution is, possible x-intercept is only 1, which is at 
x equals to minus 2. Since x plus 2 will make denominator 0, it is not in the domain. Do you understand? So there is only one x intercept. Now let's find y intercept. For y intercept, we should write x equals to 0 in the equation. So we get y equals to, when it is 0, we get minus 4 over minus 6. And that gives us minus minus is plus 2 over 3. So y intercept, as we saw here, is the ratio of these constants, right? So these constants ratio will always give you y intercept. So y intercept is 2 over 3. So let us write down here, y intercept is y equals to 2 over 3, right? So that is our answer. So what we learn from here is, when we are trying to find x intercepts in the y intercept, for rational functions, it is important to write restrictions first. If I would have written both plus minus 2, the answer would be incorrect because the function is not valid at 2. The only possible x-intercept or the x-intercept is at x equals to minus 2. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Thank you and all the best.